Welcome back to Naughty Boy Fight Picks. I'm your host, me. Uh, this is my picks and predictions video for UFC Fight Night Denver. Uh, coming off a moderately successful uh, event last week, going up six units. So, not too bad. Happy with that, of course. Way better than a loss. But, you know, I'm feeling one of those big wins again. Ain't had one in a while. And, you know, we're up. But I want to have one of those big nights. My last like real big one was uh, Gaethje vs Vic. So here's hoping for this weekend. Um, gonna quickly go through the card, then we'll go through my bets. And um, yeah, that's about it. A pretty good looking card. Uh, it's, it's had a couple fights drop drop out, which is a bit of a shame, but. Um, kind of good in terms of, or oh, unless they space those fights out with ads, I'm not sure how this works, so fucking, here's hoping that it's not spaced out, it fucking probably will be, won't it? Anyhow, um, could be a good one to watch after the fact, we shall see. Um, first fight of the night, Mark De La Rosa versus Joby Sanchez, uh, was originally De La Rosa versus Espinosa. Not sure what happened to Espinosa. I haven't even looked that up. Oh yeah, by the way, like, um, obviously this is probably the latest I've got a video up before an event in a long, long time. I've had a hectic week. I'm tired as shit. So forgive me if I'm garbage today, but I might be garbage, so. And yes, yeah, so I haven't had much energy to put into this. I have looked at all the fights. Um, but yeah, I didn't go back to this matchup. But I am familiar with the guys. Joby Sanchez has gone three, uh, one and three in the UFC. Uh, win over Matsuda, losses to Hayes, Herrera, and Sanchez. And Mark De La Rosa is one and one with a loss on debut versus Tim Elliott and then a win over Garcia. Um, De La Rosa is 10 and one. Uh, Joby Sanchez, 11-3. and three. Uh, This could be a fun fight. Um, I have not had a great look at it since it was um, made late, but I am picking De La Rosa to win here. And he has won 60% of his fights by sub, so I'm going to pick him by sub. I have got him included in some parlays here also. So he appears to be a pretty heavy betting favorite, and he's... Um, yeah, lots of people are playing De La Rosa, so I'm playing De La Rosa as well, due to my lack of time. Hopefully that pays off, because I haven't done the due diligence on this fight. But, anyhow, next fight of the night. Uh, what did I say my pick? De La Rosa by submission. Uh, next fight of the night, Joseph Morales uh, versus Eric Shelton at 125. Division soon to be dissolved, so these guys are going to want to fight their asses off, or they might have already been told they ain't got contracts no more. Um, where are we? I should have some notes on this one here. Sorry, I've got so many windows, so many screens open to try and do this. Oh, the order's been fucked up too now, so my shit isn't in order. Apologies. Morales versus Shadow. So Morales, 9 and 1. Five wins by sub. Uh, his last fight was his first ever loss, and that was against Davison Figueiredo, uh, the 15-0 Brazilian guy. He lost by KO in that fight, so pretty tough, tough way to take your first L. But Figueiredo is a fucking animal at 125. Uh, Morales is only 24. He has not got a takedown and his two UFC fights as of yet. Um, Shelton averages a few takedowns per fight. Uh, some fights, I think as many as five or six. Uh, Morales looks a bit lost on his back. He had a good debut. Um, dropped Sanchez and then locked in a choke. Uh, but yeah, then when he had that big step up, he looked pretty lost. As for Shelton, he's 11 and five. Uh, he is... Um, so his record so far in the UFC doesn't look spectacular. Where is he? Yeah, so he's uh, one and three in the UFC. 
but he has outstruck his opponents and in pretty decent margins in almost in three of his four UFC fights. So two of those losses he outstruck his opponents, which is interesting. Um, Shelton's never been finished. He's been to a few splits, went to a split with Jared Brooks. Uh, he looks faster than Morales, has nice kicks, more weapons, uh, good wrestling and control. I think Shelton will win this fight with activity. Uh, he should score takedowns, I imagine he will, and get good control time. So I'm picking uh, Shelton by decision in this fight. Uh, our next fight of the night, what do we got? Devontae Smith versus Julian Arosa. Both, well, Devontae Smith's contender series guy. Arosa, I think, yeah, he went through tough. And then did he just have the one fight in the UFC before he was dropped? And then came back through contender series and now was back in the UFC. So, strange journey for him. 155 is here. Um, what do we got on these guys? Uh, So Smith, he's 8-1, and one. 7 of those wins by KO, uh, his loss, that one loss on his record is to John Gunther, like, I don't know, a couple years ago, which is kind of concerning, um, but I mean, put that down to inexperience, and then Gunther having that grinding wrestling game, I guess. Uh, he looked really good on Contender Series against uh, another undefeated guy, well he's not undefeated, sorry. Um, he's looked really confident there, he's fast, puts his um, punches and kicks together well, so he'll um, include kicks and punches in the combos, which is a uh, great, great thing to do, obviously. Um, I did, one of my concerns about Devontae Smith is he will kind of leap into the pocket, and then he stands there a little too long before moving out or doing something so there's just this moment where he looks like he could get clipped but in the fights I've watched he managed to avoid that mostly um Arosa pretty experienced he's got a big experience advantage here he's 22 and 5 as I said he was on Ultimate Fighter uh, got dropped from UFC had some fights in Cage Warriors and other uh, circuits his last UFC fight, he got KO'd by Ishihara. Um, that was the fight. He got KO'd and then dropped, I presume. Um, came back on Contender Series against Jamal Emmers. Uh, Rose is really tall. It appears that he's moving up from 45 to 55. Um, one, one big concern about Rosa is he fights with his hands down and he gets hit. Um, and he has... Uh, significant amount of KO losses. Um, Smith looks a lot faster and more accurate. I think he's going to catch Arosa, so I'm picking Smith by KO here. Next fight up, what do we got? Davi Hamosh versus John Gunther. Um, this is pretty wild. I don't know how the fuck this fight got made or what Gunther is doing in the UFC. Uh, and why this matchup exists, it seems so peculiar. Um, where's my notes for this? Do I even need them? I don't think so. Eh? I don't think I even wrote any down. Oh, yeah, no, I did. So, yeah, Harmos 8 and 2, he's a Jiu Jitsu world champ. Six of his wins are by submission. He's got pretty decent stand up. Uh, I think in this fight he'll be comfortable to stand because Gunther moves like Theresa May. Um, Hamos looks big at 55 too. Uh, so I'm picking Hamos by sub, although I wouldn't be surprised if he gets it done on the feet. Um, wherever this fight goes, I think he'll have a big advantage, but this might be a nice opportunity for him to keep it standing and um, uh, have some fun with his stand-up, just being that Gunther is so bad on the feet. Uh, yeah, so wherever this fight goes, see Damos uh, finishing it. I'm going to say by sub, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets KO here either because Gunther is just so hittable. Um, yeah, and once again, I just want to express my absolute confusion at why this fight exists. 
Um, next fight up, we have Chaz the Scrapper Scally versus Bobby Moffat at 145 pounds. Just find my notes here. Where is it? My shit's all mixed up because of what's happened with the card. I'll be looking for Scally versus Moffat. So Moffat's 13 and 3. Uh, a lot of wrestling experience and he's a BJJ black belt. Uh, eight wins by submission. Good takedown and ground control. Works hard for the sub, so once it hits the ground, he's looking for the sub all the time. Uh, real relentless with his wrestling, and he's he's got good chain wrestling. His stand-up looks serviceable, but um, he definitely prefers to get to the ground game, and he looks to have good endurance. Scully's 17 and 3. He's got a decent-looking UFC record. Um, and those losses there to pretty good opponents. Uh, he has, however, been outlanded by massive margins in four of his last five fights. He also hasn't fought since May of last year. Um, he got into a lot of submission trouble on top of Jason Knight. I think that was in his last fight. Looks pretty awkward on the feet. Uh, Appears to tire quickly, but also appears to kind of fight through it pretty well. Um, yeah, this could be an interesting one. Both guys, I imagine, will prefer to be on the ground, but uh, yeah, I think I'm giving Moffat the the advantage in all areas here, and I think he's still the developing guy. Where I think we'll see the same chess galley we've seen before. Um, yeah, Scally's never been subbed before, so I'm going to pick Moffat here by decision. I think he can outpoint him on the feet and uh, win the ground game as well. So, uh, Moffat by decision there. Next fight of the night, we have where are we? Ashley Yoda versus Amanda Bobby Cooper. Uh, Amanda Cooper coming off that... Uh, well, there's lots of shit been going on in her personal life, which is kind of concerning. Pretty heavy shit, too. Um, both of these fighters have pretty bad-looking UFC records. Both young, young and, and experienced. Uh, hard to call. Ashley Yoda's got a pretty nice back take. Um, and I'm not super invested in this fight, so I'm just going to pick Yoda by a submission here. Next fighter, we have... Mike Trezano uh, versus Luis Violent Bob Ross Pena. Um, Trezano 8-0, Pena 5-0, two undefeated fighters, and they were both on the same season of um, tough. What one was it? Was it the, yeah, the um, Stipe and... Uh, oh, my shit, my light's just gone out. Sorry. Um, the Stipe and fucking... DC one. There we go. Um, so the line has just shifted real dramatically in this fight, and Pena is paying pretty decent money now, which is curious. It's making people suspicious, but I'm just going to take that on face value. I've got Pena in a couple of parlays, and um, <coughs> I thought... They were they both debuted on the same card, uh, the um, the finale for the one that Arasanya uh, main evented, and Trezano had a pretty lackluster performance against what's his guy uh, the guy that looks like um, Rose Namajunas. Can't remember his fucking name, but yeah, it was a pretty fucking lackluster fight and Trezano just didn't really seem to have much what do you call it much fucking instinct for the fight and he also wears that stupid fucking hat whereas um, Luis Pena went out and he was against what was his name the SBG guy Smullen and Pena went after it and just so I think Pena is more skilled but also think there seems to be this big degree of difference in where these guys see themselves heading and I think Pena's got a lot of self-belief he's down at AKA I think is Trezano a Tiger Shulman guy? I think he might be 
which I, I like that camp. I like the way those guys fight. But yeah, I think Pena is getting the rub. He's getting some promotional weight behind him. Uh, he's been mentored by guys like DC. And I think that's just going to be too much. So I'm picking Pena to win by submission in this fight. Next fight up, uh, Macy Barber versus Hannah Cyphers. Don't know shit about Cyphers. Uh, it's her UFC debut. Oh, it's both their debuts actually, but Macy Barber was on the Contender Series and looked really, really fucking good in that. So Barber's quite exciting. She's just 4-0, uh, so very inexperienced. But I haven't really looked at this fight, but I'm going to pick Barber and... What was the method? Barber by KO. Ooh, we shall see. Um, next fight of the night we have... Benel Dariush versus Thiago Moises. Uh, I was really trying to remember how to pronounce that properly, but I listened to, like, I watched a fight of him that had Brazilian commentary. Well, Portuguese. Is it Brazilian or Portuguese if you're talking about it being commentary? Never mind. Um, and I did get the correct pronunciation from listening to them say it in Portuguese, but now I've forgotten it. So, uh, Moises is 10 and 2. He's a Jiu Jitsu guy, only 23 years old, looks to be improving each time out. Uh, he can start pretty cautious. He's never been finished. Uh, looks like his stand up is coming along in recent fights. Um, got a KO in, the cont in his contender series fight. Pretty nice hand speed. Um, he also knocked out Jamal Emmers in the fifth round of a fight quite recently. So that's encouraging. Um, as for Dariush, 14-4-1. He's coming, his last three fights have been lost, draw, loss. So on a bit of a skid here where he was kind of a guy a couple years back. Um, the loss, loss to Barboza, draw with Evan Dunham, and then that loss to Alex Hernandez, which was pretty devastating. Uh, Dariush throws everything with power and he can fade throughout the fight. He has some pretty great wins and then some questionable losses as well in his record, so not a super consistent guy that you can trust. I um, mean, he's had just the one finish in his last eight fights, which I think is the knockout of James Vick, it must be. Um, yeah, I like Moises to be able to handle Dariush and outlast him. Could be a slow start, but I think he'll take over from round two onwards. So I'm picking Moises by, was it decision? I didn't write it down, but yeah, the same Moises by decision. Next fight up, we have Raquel Pennington versus Jermaine Durandamy. Uh, both these fighters coming into this fight of some odd circumstances. Obviously, Penny, uh, Pennington, um, taking that fucking beating and wanting to quit versus Amanda Nunes. Uh, that's not an indictment on her. She did want to quit. I'm just just saying. Um, and yeah, she was getting the shit beat out of her in that fight. Uh, Durandamy obviously got the 145 strap and then didn't want to defend it. Uh, she's kind of a weird character, but I listened to an interview with her recently and... Yeah, I don't know, she's a strange character, weird European, um, but yeah, I don't know, Pennington's 9-7, and seven, so she's got a checkered record, but has been good lately up until that Nunes fight, Durandamy's 7-3, uh, I just want to check, because was that Durandamy's debut where she won the title? Um... I don't know, fuck, she's had a bunch of um, UFC fights. Oh, are, they, are they counting? Yeah, so she got wins over Julie Kedzie, lost to Nunes, and some other names I don't recognise. Pennington was on that fucking streak, so she beat Andrade, Bitch Cahaya, someone Phillips, Misha Tate, and then she had the loss to Nunes. So she's also had that injury as well as... So that fight back against Nunes, she was coming off that horrific injury. Uh, anyhow, I'm uh, waffling on about bullshit. 
I see this fight. I see Pennington having trouble with the range. Dur uh, Durandam is a pretty good striker. She's got the uh, Dutch kickboxing background, and I think she will be able to pick Pennington apart. Oh, little alliteration there. Pick Pennington apart from range, and I see Pennington really struggling with that. So I got Durandamy by decision here. She does have some powerful hands, so won't be surprised if she hurts Pennington. And yeah, I, I'm just wondering how that last fight of Pennington's is going to affect her, whereas I feel like Durandamy's gonna come out and she's gonna have a bit of a point to prove. So yeah, I'm uh, pretty confident that Durandamy gets that done there. Next fight up, uh, Donald Cerrone fighting Mike Perry, and I believe this is the, it's crazy, but this is the heaviest fight on the whole card, so welterweight is the biggest boys we're going to see fight this on this card. Um, kind of a tough one to call, because I believe stylistically this, if you're just going purely on a stylistic matchup, Cerrone should win this all day. He's got better range striking, better counter striking, um, and he's just the better striker, um, and probably the better wrestler as well. Although it is alleged that Mike Perry does have some wrestling, but um, he never uses it. However, um, Cerrone continues to look more and more fragile each time we see him out, and that's a pretty major concern. Uh, and I, I am picking this fight based on that fragility. I think, yeah, you can get Cowboy out of there. Mike Perry, getting Mike Perry out of there is a difficult task. We've seen him in fucking brawls and he just keeps coming forward. I think eventually that will wear on Cerrone and Perry will get hold of him and do some damage and yeah, I don't know if Cerrone is going to be able to withstand Perry's power if he can land on him. So I'm picking Perry by knockout here, possibly early because Cerrone does start slow, tries to make his reads. Um, but yeah, picking Perry here, but yeah, it kind of feels like a fight Cerrone should win. But I think, fuck it, he's been in this game so long and taken so many fights can so much damage it's just when is this gonna you know is this the point where he loses to a guy that he is a much better fighter than so we shall see and always good having Mike Perry there for fight week entertaining stuff uh, main event of the night Chang Sung Jung the Korean zombie uh, versus Yair Rodriguez at 145 um yeah, super difficult to call with this fight. So much going on. Yaya replaces Frankie Edgar on a couple of weeks' notice, which is one thing. Both of these guys coming off long layoffs. Uh, Yaya's last fight was a, a demoralizing loss to Frankie Edgar. Uh, Korean Zombie's last fight was a return after doing his military service so he'd been away three four years or something and he came back and looked real good against Dennis Bermudez um, just yeah too many variables in this fight and real hard to call because what like I guess what it comes down to is what has Yaya achieved what has he learned in this last while and is it enough to beat like a really solid fighter like Korean Zombie uh, Korean Zombie isn't the most amazing pressure pressure fighter, but I do. And so obviously Yaya is a great kicker. What do you do do to a great kicker to stop him getting the kicks off as you pressure and move forward? Uh, Korean Zombie's pressure isn't his pressure game isn't the greatest, but he does do it. So I am favoring him, but I wouldn't be surprised if he eats some pretty gnarly shots. And Yaya definitely has um, kicks that can take your head off. But my pick is Korean Zombie to win by, I don't know, I don't even think about method. I'll have a quick look at what his, what he does. Yeah, I don't know, will he finish out here? He, he 
Yeah, you got quite a, quite a few KOs. So, yeah, I put Korean Zombie by KO there, and that is that. Now for my bets, um, I have the one straight play on YSS to beat Dariush, and then I've got what are essentially straight plays on Moffat and Shelton, but I've parlayed them with Davi Hamosh because I think that is such a lock and I wanted to try and squeeze as much value out of that fight as possible. Um, I've got Hamosh, Pena and Tyson Pedro parlayed. Uh, Tyson Pedro obviously fighting um, Shogun shortly. Then I've got Pena, uh, Durandami and De La Rosa parlayed. Uh, then I've got Hamos, Perry and Ponzinibbio parlayed, and then I got Pena and De La Rosa. Um, yeah, and that's all my plays for this week, and I think I will probably leave it at that. I don't really, I had a look around for some props, but I didn't find anything that I particularly liked. Um, what's the news this week? Did, did people see the, the Stipe interview on MMA Hour? Um, still whinging about DC thing now taking to insulting Derek Lewis which gave me a thought I was like I want him to fight Derek Lewis because looking back at I think uh, well he got the finish in the hunt fight eventually but looking at the hunt fight and then Garnu fight uh, where Stipe wrestled strikers that are better than him or more dangerous than him um, he definitely gassed and got tired keeping big powerful guys on the ground against uh, Derek Lewis that could be a recipe for disaster so I would love to see that be Stipe's next fight and to see him get knocked out by Derek Lewis and be humbled and go way back down to the back of the line because his whinging is not becoming um, other news obviously looks like the the 125 division is being fucking uh, dissolved really quickly lots of guys coming out saying their contracts are gone um real concerned that this may affect kai cutter france from city kickboxing who is making his debut in adelaide i hope not he does have a record at 135 uh good record there so um and i wonder if uh city kickboxing has a bit of push now now that they got um israel the hottest new prospect in the ufc there, plus Dan Hooker doing really well, so hopefully Kai keeps a contract, um, and yeah, he will need to put on a real good performance in Adelaide, which I'm pretty confident he will, but yeah, real sad to see a bunch of like fighters you really like watching uh, coming out saying that they're just being shelved, and I wonder where they're all going to go, and whether one promotion, not one is in the promotion, whereas a singular promotion will make an effort to snatch up all these guys. I don't know if any promotion will have the bank to be able to really do it, but... Um, and would you want to spend... Would you want to, like, front up a lot of cash for a division that hasn't worked for the UFC? But yeah, a lot of great fighters could kind of... Um, uh, what's the word? Fade into obscurity without that division in the UFC, which is really sad, like, so... Shorty Torres talking about it, Jared Brooks. Um, oh, that was the other thing I didn't talk about too, is Ray Borg having to pull out this card um, for his fight versus Joseph Benavidez, and fuck, that guy's had a terrible year. The, the way his luck has gone this year, you could only imagine that he's going to lose his UFC contract as well, which is fucking real, real fucking sad for that dude, given everything that's happened to him this year that's... Horrible. I hope not. I hope he keeps the contract. Anyhow, that's me for today. I've rushed through it. Um, I'm fucked. But I'm going to try and get a lot of um, a lot of research done for the next card over this weekend. So I can have the picks and predictions up early next week. If this event uh, has a bunch of talking points, I will probably do a recap. But we will see how that goes. Next weekend's card, just have a quick look at that. That's uh, Magni versus Ponzinibbio. 
seems like ages since Ponza Nibio has fought, but I'm um, excited to see him back. Got Llamas versus Alkins, that could be cool. Khalil Roundtree's back. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Cynthia Cavillo versus, uh, is it Poliana Bocellio? That could be good. Tractor Pizeras versus Bartos Fabinski. Uh, Pantoja versus Sasaki. Yeah. It's a reasonable card. But yeah, I'll be back. If not with a recap following the fights, then with uh, our picks and predictions for that card. Early next week, all going to plan. Um, my time is about to get a bit better. Um, I've been doing night shift and day shift recently, which is fucking killing me. Hence why I've been so slack. But yeah, I'll be back with that. Um, subscribe and like. Hit me up with some comments so I got some shit to answer in the recap video. And that'll make me more likely to do one. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. Good luck with your picks this week and let's get some fucking money.